So this is how you make a contact sheet in Adobe Photoshop CS6. I've got a folder of images here which I took specifically for um, using for this sort of purpose, for making demonstrations, and we're going to select that folder in a minute. But if we go into Photoshop and go to File, Automate, Contact Sheet 2, we'll get this dialog box up, which is much the same as the one in the old Photoshop. We need to start at the top and talk about the source images. Where are we going to get the images from? Well, you've got a couple of choices here. You've got files that are open, but you've also got a folder, and that's what I'm going to choose. And I'm going to go to the Choose bit and choose on the desktop that Demo Shoot folder. You notice that these pictures are greyed out. You can't select individual pictures. You can only select the whole folder if you go this way. If you want to select individual pictures, you need to go the other route and open the pictures into Photoshop to start with. So I'm going to include subfolders, not that there are any. And you can, if you want to, choose to group images by folder if you've got a large folder of images with lots of folders of different shoots within that. I'm now going to choose the size of the document and it's already set here actually just a bit smaller than um, a sheet of A4 paper so it's 20 centimeters wide and 27 inches high, 27 centimeters high and resolution we actually want to go by pixels per inch because that's the generally the standard way of doing things so make sure it says pixels per inch not per centimeter it might say pixels per centimeter to start with and I want you to choose 180 pixels per inch which is the best sort of basic resolution for doing things like this. Leave the mode on RGB color and the bit depth on 8-bit and certainly leave the color profile where it is but make sure it says flatten all layers and then you can go on to the next stage which is how to arrange the thumbnails. It doesn't matter to me whether you do them across first or down first, they tend to sort of randomize them a little bit anyway, they don't necessarily come out in the order you've taken them but you do need to pay attention to this bit. Use auto spacing but choose then how many columns and rows you want. I know I've got in this folder of images, I've got about 38 images. So if I choose 4 by 5, that'll give me 20 images per, per page. So that'll mean that I'll create just, just, just less than two pages of pictures. But you want to sort of think about how many pictures you've got and what size you want them. I wouldn't normally expect you to go any less than 4 by 4 because that'll give you 16 images per page. That's quite big. You also don't want to go much higher, I wouldn't say, than 5 by 5, which will give you 25 images per page. So I think the best way for me particularly, and the best way to stick out most of the time, is 20 images per page. Rotate for best fit, so that you can see them all at the same sort of size. It doesn't mean that they won't all be round the same way, but that's okay actually, it doesn't seem to matter. It's just good to be able to see them the same sort of size. Using file name as caption, well it's up to you whether you choose to or not, but I recommend you do, because then it means you can actually if you, if you find an image on the contact sheet you want to go back to and edit, it's really easy to find it because it will tell you which number image it actually is. Um, choose whatever font you want to do as long as you can read it and I recommend going down to about 8 point or something for the font size so that you've actually, um, you don't take up too much space with the text. And then it's time to click OK and watch the uh, program actually put your images together. At this point I'm just going to pause it. Okay, so I've been away and I've come back and I've found that it's made my contact sheet so I can pull this one to one side so that I can see them next to each other. And now they're ready to print. You have to print them individually, just like normal, um, onto a sheet of A4 and make sure you click shrink to fit. And then it's time to go and an annotate them.